I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad I'm here. Welcome. We're going to have fun today. Oh boy, oh boy. We're going to talk to, I don't know, you know, anyone out there that happens to be a warrior. <gasps> hey, wait, that's you and you and you and anybody else <laughs> and me, okay? I'm still a warrior. I hate to admit it, you guys, okay? I mean, how many of us and I know I talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it again. So many people have put off getting their blood tests done, their uh, physicals done. For those of you who get, you know, mammograms and pap smears, not hopefully not the guys, but you never know. <laughs> well, we've all put it off, right? So I had to get some of that stuff done this week. I was worried. I was, my favorite word is scaredy. I was scaredy. <laughs> like, I went in there going, ah, especially. Oh my God, that mammogram. I hate the mammograms, guys. Listen, you don't have to. Imagine someone taking your, you know, your your lower extremity and putting it between two pieces of plastic and going, <laughs> there, breathe. Now hold it. Right, ladies? We're going, <laughs> like our, our boobs are squashed down to nothing. And then we're supposed to breathe <laughs> and hold it. <laughs> and then it's like, Okay, you'll have the results on Monday, and it's a Friday. So what do we do all freaking weekend, ladies? We, it starts with a W. Worry. We worry. Ah! Or the guy you're dating is talking to you on Saturday night, and he goes, you know, I'm not sure I'm feeling what you're feeling, you know? I mean, I really enjoy you and everything, but I'm not sure that I, it's working for me. I'll see you next Wednesday. So what do you do for five days? You freaking worry. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. You get your colonoscopy if you're over 50, right? And they're like, well, I have the results to you in three days. So what do you do for three days? You freaking worry. And, and you know, for people who say, I'm not a worrier, I think they lie. They are liars. Maybe they're not worriers, but they're liars because <laughs> everybody worries. So if you'd like to know what we worry about, we worry about money. In fact, I had some really interesting information. Oh wait, it's in this great book by an author named Lucinda Bassett. And it says that 73% of all Americans point to money as their primary worry. What's number two? Health. We worry about death and dying and being sick, right? And sickness and death. And then feeling out of control, believe it or not, is a big worry. Being out of control, feeling out of control. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, you can't control, like a real good example is what's happening right now, politically, um, with the pandemic. We don't have any control over that crap. And it's a bunch of bullshit, but we still worry about it. Getting the vaccine. I mean, you're right, you know, like one out of three people are vaccinated, but the bottom line is people are still scared to get vaccinated. People are worrying there's something wrong with it. It's gonna hurt them. I had someone call me the other day and say, but my sister from sister-in-law's sister sister-in-law said that her sister-in-law told her sister-in-law that the vaccine is causing some people to get sick and die. And I'm like, really, tell me who that is because I've got both vaccines, I'm still alive, and I'm not worrying about dying from the vaccine. Now, I, I have asthma and I'm over 60, so I would have worried about getting COVID but hopefully now I won't have to worry about that. So um, the other thing that we worry about, believe it or not, is not having control of our children, not having control of the future. We worry about what other people think about us. We worry if we are enough, if we're enough for our lover, if we're enough for our friends, if we're enough for our employer, if we're enough for our employees, if we're attractive enough, if we're thin enough. I actually um, went to someone's house the other night for a dinner, dinner party, lovely couple. And the woman said to me, I need to be thin and blonde like you. Number one, I'm not thin. And number two, I'm not blonde, <laughs> I don't think. But you know, and she, and she, this is a really brilliant, I'm not gonna tell you this, no, I never tell you who I'm talking about, but a really incredibly fabulous, brilliant professional woman who lives in this beautiful house. And I'm envious of her. See, this is how this works, right? I'm worried that I'm not good enough for her, even though, Hey, I've written books and I, uh, I'm fairly smart. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm a good guest, but it was so ironic to me that I get into her beautiful home, 
you know what? Her home was 20 years old and she had her kids' pictures on the walls and she's still married to the same guy. And I'm envious, right? And she's looking at me going, oh, you're an author and you're attractive and you have, I guess, blonde hair. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have the most perfect life. So the point is worrying, constant worrying is extremely ineffective. It's the one, it's one of the things that we do that really wastes our time. But not only does it waste your time, it makes you sick. Constant worrying can take a heavy toll on our health. It can keep you up at night. It can make you tense and edgy during the day. It can make you feel like you're a nervous wreck. It can make you second guess yourself. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about here? And and so you want to know, well, am I a worrier? Well, I've, you know, oh, there's some other interesting facts. I'm going to float back and forth about a couple of things. So there are some negative beliefs about worry. People worry that that, that if they worry constantly, that they're going to create some kind of health issue for themselves or have a heart attack or that they're going to lose control of their mind, that they're going to lose control of themselves. OK, um, the positive beliefs about worry. And I know you'd say there's no positive belief about worry. Oh, yes, there is. People stupidly believe that when they're worrying, they're doing something about whatever it is they're worried about. Well, at least I'm worrying about it. <laughs> you know. And if I worry about it, maybe I'll figure out what to do about it. Right. No, that's not how it works. When you worry about whatever it is you're worrying about, you are throwing fuel on the fire and making yourself sick. And you're sitting there going, well, you know what? If I worry about it, then I'll prepare myself for the worst, just in case the worst happens, right? No, <laughs> because 99.9% .9 of the time, whatever you're worrying about isn't going to happen. But you're going to sit there and make yourself sick worrying that it might happen so they're, you're prepared just in case he does leave you just in case the test does come back in the wrong way just in case you do lose your job just in case you do get covid and 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 then none of it happens and you spent four nights not sleeping maybe you've got a stomach ache maybe you've got diarrhea diarrhea so symptoms of bad worrying would be inability to sleep inability to to enjoy your moment and you can just go right down the list. Inability to concentrate. Um, uh, when people tend to worry a lot, they tend to, when you find yourself sitting by yourself, are you worrying? Do you have a hard time sitting and reading a book because you need to sit and worry about something? I know it sounds stupid, but if you're somebody that worries, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Perhaps um, you're convinced that worrying is what you should be doing. Maybe you're worried about it, your your teenager. Maybe you're worried about um, whether or not you know you're drinking too much, and then you think to yourself, "Well, if I worry about it, maybe I'll problem solve." But the key here is, you know, worry your way to wealth. You can worry your way to wealth. Wealth being abundance, peace of mind, satisfaction. That's a word that very few people. Contentment. A feeling of being safe with yourself. Turning that energy of worry, that creativity and overanalyzing everything and overthinking everything, in turning it outward so that you can actually set your intentions and set goals and go after your dreams. So let me just ask you a few questions. And you can kind of just answer this and it will help you understand if you're a worrier. So worriers tend to feel overwhelmed, moody, and agitated. Irritable. Worries, worriers are people who try to control themselves, other people, and situations in their life. Worriers only feel in control when they're trying to solve their worry problem, whatever they're worried about. Worrying about it gives you a sense of feeling like you're controlling it. Um, Worriers tend to obsess and ruminate about the same thing over and over. And often they complain of headaches, ulcers, upset stomachs, and sleeping problems. Worriers have a hard time being in the present moment. Worriers often procrastinate because they're afraid of making the wrong decision. Bruce, if you're still out there, I know that you can do that. <laughs> um, worriers sometimes isolate themselves because they're so focused on whatever it is they're worried about, they can't go out and just be in the moment and have fun. So they'd rather sit at home and worry. And it, it's, it's almost um, 
it's almost an addiction because when you do it, you, it, it, it creates these, you know, chemical reactions in your brain and it feels familiar and it feels like you're doing something. And even though it's not changing anything, think about the last time you sat and worried about something and it created a positive effect in the outcome of what you're worrying about. No. So what do we do? So here's what we do. Step one. I want you to define your fear. So what is it that you're worrying about? Is it real? Is it something that you are man manufacturing in your brain? I'm worried that I'm never going to get married. Well, how old are you? 30? I think you got some time. Okay. I'm worried that um, I, I, you know, may never ever find anybody to love. You know, well, ha have you been on, on the dating sites? Have you been dating people? Um, I'm worried that, you know, I'm financially not safe. Well, what are you doing so that you can create financial security in your life. So step one is you can't fix what you don't understand. Categorize your worry and concern in order of priority. Which of these things do I have control over? This is really important. Which of these things can I take action to do something about? And which of these things do I have no control over? Like the pandemic and what the world's going to be like once everything opens up again. You have no control over that. And who's going to win the presidency? That's already decided anyway. But you can't control it. So now you accept it and you move on. So cross out the things you can't affect. And then ask yourself um, the rest of my worries. So the things that I can't control, I'm going to cross off my list. The things I can control, are they real? Are they worth thinking about? Okay. Um, and then can I look at these worries with less personal involvement? And what could I do to turn this thing that I'm worried about into a goal or uh, to, to, you know, take control of the worry so it has a positive outcome? Step two, and this is one of my favorites. So step one, try to define what it is you're worried about. Eliminate the things you have no control over and the things you do have control over. We're going to set some intentions on how you might manage them. Step two, take a time out. Step back. Step away from it. Take a 10 minute to a 24 hour, I love 24 hour timeout. Say, you know what? I'm not going to think about this. And this is something that some of you know about, which I call set aside worry time. So every day I want you to plan a time of day that you're going to, you're going to address your worries. So if you're sitting there worrying at 10 o'clock in the morning and you say, I'm going to make my worry time seven o'clock at night at 10 o'clock in the morning, if you're worried about your mammogram, say, you know what? I'm going to put that, I'm going to worry about it at seven o'clock tonight and I'll turn that into a goal, something that I can actually work on and try to problem solve around. So take a time out, 24 hours, I would say a day, to try to analyze what it is you're worried about and how you might approach getting grounded about whatever it is you're worried about, getting some answers. Step three, create a plan of action. When you worry, you desperately hope that that negative thing that you're worried about will not happen. But what needs to happen in your life right now to eliminate that mm -hmm. sense of fear and anxiety about your worry. So, you know, if, you, if you're worried about having breast cancer and you don't want to get your mammogram, schedule the freaking mammogram like I did and go do it so you can stop worrying about breast cancer. You know, if you're worried about your finances, sit down with someone who understands money, maybe a friend or an advisor, and explain your finances finances to them and try to put a, a plan of action together so that you feel more responsible and more financially secure. Maybe you need to be on a budget. Maybe you need to rethink where you're at financially at 45 years old. And maybe you want to, you know, grow your business. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you want to change your career, you know. So create a plan of action that will help you decrease the worry because, you know, a lot of our anxiety when it comes from floating and feeling like we don't have any answers, we don't know what to expect. So we're worried because we are anticipating a, ne a negative end result. When you create a plan of action to help you solve whatever it is you're worrying about, then you feel grounded and you'll, then you can go back and say, well, this is what I'm doing about this. I have a plan of action. So step number three is create a plan of action. Step four, and this is one of my favorite, and it sounds stupid, but use your fear of whatever it is your worry as a motivator. 
So if you're worried about being alone, use that as motivation to start dating. If you're worried about not having enough money, use that as motivation to create a budget for yourself. I'm surprised how many people, uh, at even my age, people in their 60s, aren't on, aren't on a budget, don't understand how much money they have or how much money they need moving forward. Anybody can go to a financial planner and sit down and say, look, you know what, I'm, I'm 48 years old, this is the money I have in the bank, this is how I want to spend. And by the way, you know, if you're 48, chances are good you're going to live to be 95. So you need to make sure you have enough money to live to be 95. What do you want your life to look like when you're 60, 70, 80? What do you want to be doing when you're when you're 55? Plan, because when you have a plan, you're using the anxiety of worry, which is creativity, overthinking, overanalyzing, futuristic thinking. You're using all of that creative energy to now you're setting now you're setting goals and setting intentions and you're creating a plan of action to get to where you want to go. And then number step number five is um, get up and get moving. Get moving. By that I mean, you know, with you guys, breathe, get out, take a walk. It, the best thing you can do when you're worried, don't sit at home by yourself and ruminate. You know, get out, go for a walk, go for a hike, run, go to the gym. Get on your treadmill, release some of those, you know, release that energy and those endorphins so that you feel like, you know, you're doing something productive. I guarantee you, you will feel better physically and emotionally if you get out and release some of that energy. And then number six, and this is really important, talk about your worries. Now, there's a difference between, you know, I want to talk to you about something I'm worried about um, to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That's it's please talk about your worries. Talk to me, talk to a therapist, talk to your best friend, talk to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That's what they're there for. But don't complain. There's a big difference. And we talked about complaining last week. Don't be a complainer. Nobody wants to use sit around and complain about how crappy and shitty your life is. If you're truly worried, listen, it's time for me to get my mammogram, but I'm worried about going in. You know, I'm scared I might have a bad test result. Your boyfriend should say, hey, your babe, you want, you want me to go with you? I'll go with you. That's what the right, the real boyfriend, just you guys that might be listening out there. Because <laughs> that's what my guy did. I was saying, I've got to go have this done. I have to have my my physical, my blood work. He goes, you want me to go with you? And I'm like, no, I'm a big girl. I'll pull on my big girl panties and I'll go do this by myself. But I, I was still worried. But that's why I scheduled the test. Because 99% of the time, there is nothing there. And if you're sitting around wasting your life at 25, 35, or 65 worrying about things, worry isn't effective. Worry does you no good. So talk about your worries. So that's number six. So number one, define what it, what it is you're scared about worrying about and try to and figure out which of them you can do something about and which you can't. And the ones you can do something about, set a plan of action to start to take control so that you can eliminate that worry. Step two, take time out. Take a 24-hour time back out, step back to really kind of evaluate, you know, is this something that I'm just filling myself with fear about, or is this a real problem that I actually need to take control of? Step three, create a plan of action around those worries that you do have control over, like something to do with your health, or maybe you need to apologize to someone that you were, you know, nasty to, or maybe you, you know, need to mend um, some issue, some disagreement with someone. Maybe you need to say you're sorry. All of those things are fixable. Um, Step number, step number four, use your fear as motivation. Whatever it is you're anxious and worried about, if you're worried about not having enough money, use that as motivation to make more money. If you're worried about growing old alone, use that as motivation to get out and date. Instead of going, woe is me and being a victim, use your worry as something that you can turn around and help create your intentions in your life and set goals for yourself. Uh, step number five, get up, get going, move, breathe, get that breath work going. It's so good for you. And step num number six, talk about your worries. Talk to people like me. You know, um, that brings me to, uh, I do do coaching. As many of you know, I'm uh, very excited. I've had quite a few new coaching clients lately. And if you're interested in that, you should call in because we did a really powerful thing a couple of months ago that went really well. And we did a group, 
a group of people and I coached, I think we had uh, 12 people in one group and it was so much fun. Some of you were in there and we had a lot, a lot of fun. We're gonna start another group. If you would like more information about that, please call Darla at 419-350-7499 because um, I would love to coach you. And I'm trying to find, let's here we go. Um, I would love to coach you. I, I'm really good at helping you work through whatever it is you're worried about. I'm really good at helping you um, create really powerful affirmations for yourself. And the thing about whatever it is you're worried about and whatever it is, there are 9 million different ways to look at it. And I'm someone that can see the light at the end of the tunnel and the creative, powerful way it could change your life. Believe it or not, some of the most incredible things in my life have come to me through worrying. Because what I did is I, I said, okay, I'm worried about this. I think I told you about this too. And if you have any questions, throw them up there. Um, yes, we need an 800 number. <laughs> You are so, you guys are funny. Um, so um, I think I think what what is interesting, I'm, I'm trying to turn off video, so bear with me here. Um, what's interesting is worry is not something you have to be afraid of unless, how do you know that your worry is something you need to worry about? If it is consuming you, if you are, not enjoying your life on a daily basis because of worry. If you are having a hard time living in the moment because of worry. If you are losing sleep, waking up at four in the clock in the morning because of worry. If you are using substances because of worry, alcohol, medication, weed, and you know what, hey, it's okay to have a glass of wine, but if you're, if you're you know, drinking too much and smoking too much weed and, and taking prescription medication, to stop yourself from worrying. It can be very effective, but it can also make you very sick. All right, I wanna share something with you that's in this fabulous book called The Solution. Oh yes, by Lucinda Bassett. Um, you are in control of your thoughts. You energize only those thoughts that bring out the best in you. Your mind is aligned with positive ideas and energy. You're bright, cheerful, lively, enthusiastic, and you're all, excited about the possibilities that life has to offer you. You enjoy the present moment. You plan positively for the future and you leave the past, eh, you leave it in the past. As a result, you have a peaceful body and a strong, contented mind. You give off a sense of ease, confidence and assurance. Your thoughts are organized and beneficial to you as well as other people. All your thoughts bring you a sense of health, calm, and well-being. You dwell on harmony and balance as you think in a decisive and determined way. You are resolute and certain to achieve the best possible outcome in all that you do for everyone. Your view of the world is surrounded by a healthy glow of optimism and self-assuredness. You face your personal obligations by focusing your attention on things you can change for the better. You don't focus on the negative. You're attuned to what's best for you. You see the best in the world around you and you see the best in other people. You are smart enough to focus only on what you can change and you accept that which you cannot change. When you choose what you wish to think about, you'll have no time left over for worry. Who wrote that? Lucinda Bassett. <laughs> So the whole point of this conversation tonight is that worry is, is a destructive emotion that causes a lot of angst. And unfortunately, it can cause depression, it can cause anxiety, and it can make you feel really shitty. And what I want you to understand is there's something called worry reversal and I talk about it in my book, The Solution, and, and, and it's pretty simple. It's where you take that creative energy that you use to worry and to fantasize about everything bad happening, and you turn it around and you use that creative energy to, to, clarify your goal, to clarify what you want, clarify your goals, set your intentions, talk to other people that are doing what you want to do, know that anything is possible, believe in yourself, and stay optimistic. Okay? 
And, and people will say to me, well, how did you get where you are? That's how I did it. I don't sit around and waste my time worrying. It's a waste. Worry is a waste of your time. All right, so we're gonna breathe. And you wanna sit back and relax. And you're gonna trust the universe right now. Breathing, you know, it's so funny. People are so afraid to breathe. I would say that's one of the most common concerns people call me with, especially men. They're afraid they're gonna stop breathing. But breath is life and breath, so much of your, your energy comes from breathing and you detoxify your body. When you breathe the way that I wanna teach you to breathe, um, you, you're breathing out toxins, you're breathing in life, you're breathing, breathing in energy from the universe. So don't be afraid to breathe. It's, it's a really healthy thing to do. And maybe you're an overbreather, which means you are a laborious breather. Maybe when you worry, you're like, oh my God, I'm so worried about that. <laughs> it's not good to breathe that way. Maybe you, when you are depressed, you tend to underbreathe. You kind of. The proper way to breathe is to breathe the way you're breathing now, calmly and comfortably. And when you want to breathe as a form of meditation, you want to slow your breath down. You want to breathe in through your mouth as though you're breathing, uh, drinking from a water bottle, and you're going to breathe into the count of three and then blow out through your mouth as if you're blowing on a mirror. So you open your mouth and keep it open. You're not going to breathe through your nose. You're going to breathe into the count of three and then breathe out short, short breath out like you're breathing through, like you're breathing on a mirror. And you're going to sit back, close your eyes, and you're going to put your right hand on your heart chakra, which is above your chest, and your left hand on your solar plexus chakra, which is the area above your belly button and below your, your chest. And as I've told you before, those are two very important chakras for giving, putting out positive energy to the universe and receiving messages from the universe. And when you breathe, it's always good to go in with an intention. So I invite you now to sit back, close your eyes, open your mouth, and you may not feel like you know what you're doing, that's okay. Open your mouth and it's, it's kind of like, Close your eyes and surrender into the energy of this breath work and let go. I invite you to surrender into the energy of spirit and this breath work. Feel the vibration in your hands, moving down through your face, through your body. We're gonna start with the crown chakra, which connects you to the divine source of light. It's at the top of your head. This is where you open your, your higher self to the energy of spirit. That's how you begin this breathing process. Feel the energy in your crown chakra, moving down from the crown chakra to your third eye, expanding your awareness of your higher self. The third eye is the chakra right between, right between your eyebrows. This is my favorite, one of my favorite chakras, the third eye chakra. That's where a lot of God information comes to you. That's where the universe connects to your higher self. That third eye chakra is a very spiritual center. As you move from your third eye, your awareness, your higher self, down to the thro throat chakra, that's that indentation, right? Right at the bottom of your throat. It's a very powerful chakra for those of you that are warriors, that are complainers, that have a hard time reaching out and asking for help when you need it. <sighs> This is your highest truth, your form of communication. Moving now to the heart chakra, which is the area right above your chest and below your neck. This is a very powerful chakra. This is your um, chakra. This is my, my will and God's will are one. I am God. I am enough. I am truth. I am spirit. I am loving, I am loved. That is your heart chakra. 
Moving now to the solar plexus chakra, which, ah, uh, that's that area right below, it's above your, below your chest and above your belly button. This is your solar plexus chakra. This is, this is your God voice. This is, that's where you feel emotion in your gut. That's when you feel like you want to say you're sorry. That's when you feel like you did the wrong thing. That's when you go, ah, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Ah, oh, I wish I weren't by myself. Ah, oh, I wish I wasn't, I wasn't such a worrier. <laughs> that is your solar plexus chakra. Breathe your positive energy into your solar plexus right now. Feel the energy of the universe in that solar plexus chakra. Because when you do that, you are expanding that area. You're bringing positive blood flow into your solar plexus. When you breathe in, you are expanding. It's, you're, bringing, you're bringing air and hyper oxygenating your blood cells, your body and your brain. And it detoxifies your body. And that solar plexus is such a powerful area for healing. Moving on down, you're moving down to the sacral chakra, which is right above your pubic area. And believe it or not, this is your love chakra. This is where you allow yourself, I am worthy of love. I am worthy of commitment. I am worthy of a great relationship with someone. I am ready, I am willing, and I am waiting for my next partner in life. I am, I am, instead of worrying that you may never find him or her, start manifesting. I know what I want. Write it in your phone, in your notes. Describe what, describe what he looks like. Describe what she looks like. What kind of personality they're going to have. And that leaves us moving down to the grounding chakra. Feel the energy circling around you, landing down to the base chakra. This chakra connects you to Mother Earth. This is where you find your, your footing. You know you're safe. You know you're grounded. You know you're enough. You know you're strong. You know you're confident. You know you can handle anything. And when you're worried, Figure out which one of these chakras you need to bring energy to. And the left hand is all about bringing the universal energy that you need into you. So put your hand on that chakra. If, if it's love, put your hand down on your sacral chakra. If it's a connection to God, you can put your hand on your heart chakra, which is also about love. If you need to find that connection to your higher self, put your left hand on your third eye chakra. If you feel like you need to find more power from source, from the universe, that's, that's this crown chakra above your head. If you need to feel more grounded, more secure, more solid, that's your base chakra. That's right down, right, right, like kind of where your buttocks is. So would you take your hands right now, put your hands on the chair or on the arms of the chair or on the bed or wherever you are on the floor. And I want you to feel how grounded you are. And I want you to breathe. And I want you to take a moment and realize you are enough. You have everything you need. You don't need to worry. You're in good hands, your hands. And the universe has your back. And anything is possible. We're moving into a new time and a new normal. And it's a very exciting time in the world. And I want you to spend this week using your worry time as a worry reversal experience where you use that creative, that creative energy of worry in positive pursuit of a better life for yourself, better relationships for yourself, better feeling of security for yourself, better sense of wholeness for yourself, better sense of safety for yourself. Because as I said, when I read you that quote from my book, you're magical. You are full of potential for great things. So I hope you'll join me next week. Meanwhile, go make it a great week to be you. Peace out.